Welcome to Crime Time News and Entertainment with a Buzz. The edited version of the video and the pictures that you just saw are of an incident that took place in a place called the red light district that is in Barbados, Nelson Street to be specific. Majestic Bar to be specific. It is a sports bar where they play pool. Now when I mention red light district, we are talking about the likes of Amsterdam or we are speaking about the back road in Jamaica. This is a place that they have all sorts of entertainment center, bars and grills and also the selling of PUMS, meaning back road arbitrary. However, this incident took place maybe over a week ago. Well, not maybe over a week ago. Over a week ago. I got the information. However, the information was kind of sketchy. The information that I got at first, the poor, poor were surmising that this hit, this assassination was done by some group of Jamaicans, specifically three of them. Based on the information, it is said that on that fateful night, Persons were there as usual, majestic bar, having a good time playing pool, sipping on scissor. When three men jump in at the people and place armed with all sorts of assault rifle, A to the K, M to the 16, Ray to the T. Blaze up on the patrons after the smoke clear, it is kind of conflict or was kind of conflicting that at least four persons lost their life and then three other persons were kind of injured very badly. It is now confirmed that three persons died. One person is under poor, poor guard in the hospital in a very bad condition. He was hit up at least 14 times. It is said that this man, who was the target of the operation, the target of the hits, he was lucky to be alive. In the videos and pictures that I show you, he was the one individual that ran under the pool table. You could see several instances these gunmen were bending under the table and still blazing him up while he tried to hide under the pool table. Luckily for him, he is still alive. Unfortunately for at least three other individuals that probably had nothing to do with it, they lost their life. Four other individuals were unfortunate to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Now people, when this incident occurred, because of the unusualness of this, and I am not going to say that there is no source of crime in a Barbados. However, when we see these mass S-H-O-O-T-I-N-G, the relevant authority, they are perplexed. So based on the information, they are tight-lipped because they want to do a proper investigation, thorough investigation, and get to the bottom of it. Based on credible source, during this preliminary investigation, it is surmised that the three individuals with these assault rifles are all Jamaican. The one individual that was in or is in the hospital, he is also Jamaican. He is the target of the operation. He is under heavy popo guard because they are wondering and pondering. Based on information that I am also getting, it is said that this is a second incident, well not mass. There was another shooting maybe about a couple of hours before this, in which it is said that this might also be linked. So therefore they went at one place, then pie pie up the place. I think at least one individual also got conned up and then they went back in this instance, at least seven people. Three lost their life, the next one is battling like I said conned up at least 14 times. Now, based on credible information that is out there, after preliminary investigation, further investigation, the poor poor are surmising, based on information that they got from one of the victims, that these persons did not come to Barbados legally, meaning through the immigration, through customs. It is said that they came on some sorts of boats, and the motive behind all of these pie pie up has to do with all sorts of illegal activity. That means uh, some people suppose they get some sorts of money and some people backstab them. So therefore, this is what we call reprisal, reprisal, reprisal. And people, we've seen it in Jamaica on many instances. Yes, it hit the shores of Barbados by storm. 
and these people are not going to be able to deal with it or they made up their mind that they are not going to deal with it before so them ban out the whole of the Jamaican them out of them place know that is a bit extreme but trust me things are going to change drastically as it pertains to Jamaicans entering Barbados now if you know anything about Barbados when it comes to crime when it comes to takeaway when it comes to any sorts of criminal activity they probably have a handful of takeaway on an annual basis. So therefore, whenever there is one instance in which mass, three people lose them life, four other individuals, that was after a couple of hours before that, some other people get blazed up, all sorts of people have to take for themselves. The people, them, meaning the relevant authority, them are wonder, them are ponder. What is going on? What is this drastic change? What is this ill wind that is hitting our country? And the main component, the X factor in all of this is the Jamaicans are here. There goes the mother humping neighborhood. Now, people, I did a story maybe about a couple of months ago. When I spoke about an incident in the Barbados where I showed you a video with a man was at his house. CCTV camera was picking him up. He had on some sorts of expensive big cargo chain. Solid one. We then saw a couple of vehicles pull up. A couple of men alighted from out of the vehicle. All sorts of gun drawn. Blaze up the man multiple times. The mission was to get that chain off that man's neck. As a matter of fact, they dragged the man from the house almost to their vehicle trying to get that chain off. Eventually, they open it after they open F-I-R-E on that man. Based on the information confirmed, it is said that the shooters, the K-I-L-L-E-R-S, in this incident were also Jamaicans. Fast forward on or about July 9, 2024, a 20-year-old lady, Jonah Branch, she was seven months pregnant, I mean Barbados native, Barbados citizen, I think. She was taken away by a 23-year-old lady, Celicia LaShawn Campbell, Jamaican again, S-T-A-B-B-E-D-E-R to D-E-A-T-H, over some sorts of relationship triangle that went woefully wrong. Now, based on these three incidents, back-to-back, D-E-A-D-L-Y incidents, the relevant authority, they are wondering, they are pondering. What are we going to do to stop this onslaught of Jamaican coming to our country, taking away our citizens' life? Causing all sorts of mayhem, all sorts of panic. They are wondering if they should change the procedures, the protocols, as it pertains to Jamaican citizens, Jamaican residents, as it pertains entering Barbados. Should they require any sorts of visa? Should there be more stringent investigation or interview when they reach our border to see who is allowed and who will not be allowed. And people, you know that when it comes to rules and law, they want to be fair. However, when a group of persons, specifically Jamaicans, are causing all sorts of mayhem in other people them country, like them say, drastic times, drastic measures. So therefore, these people are in all sorts of high-level meetings, especially after this mass pie pie up, in which at least three persons lost their life. They are thinking that they have to make some sorts of swift, knee-jerk protocol changes as it pertains to Jamaican entering their shores. What are they going to do? They don't want to seem as if there's any sorts of prejudice against any sorts of nation. But people, like I said, the X factor in all of this mayhem that is going on in a Barbados is Jamaican, Jamaican, Jamaican. It is getting from bad to worse. And like I said, desperate times calls for desperate measure. These people know that they have to do something real fast because things are getting out of hand. As it pertains to the Jamaicans, Hurricane Jamaica, them call it, hit them by storm, point blank, and period. So the next thing that is popping in the news, people, I don't know what is happening in a place called Claremont, Steerfield, that is in St. Anne's. 
a couple of years ago, I did a video and I said that, you know, so St. Anne's, St. Anne, I got broke out like sore. And this was based on the fact that I see a whole bunch of criminal elements, meaning of the chopper type, infiltrating, infesting the people in place and people I don't know specifically if this incident that I am going to speak about has anything to do with choppings. However, I would not be surprised if choppers are involved. The picture that you see on the screen is of a 21-year-old man. His name is Peter John Ricketts. He is said to be a customer service representative from Draxall. However, a couple of days ago, the security at the Caribbean Broilers property was doing their routine check along the fence, along the perimeter fence. When they noticed a body, when they summoned the popo, the popo came on the scene and they found this man that was missing for a couple of days, maybe a couple of hours. His hands were tied, his foot were tied, his feet were tied. He was gagged and bounded. And there was a noticeable hole in his head that did not belong there. He was taken out A-S-S-A-N-I-T-A-T-I-O-N style. The sad thing is that family members, friends and co-workers were missing this man. Now the family member, friends and co-workers will have to plan some sorts of funeral, final send-off for this youth. That is said to be some sorts of customer service representative. People, the sad state of affair in Jamaica is that you can be a hard-working youth. You can be involved in all sorts of criminal activity, including the C-H-O-P-P-I-N-G-S. And your outcome might be the same. As sad as it sounds, people will take you away for your own thing. People will take you away for double-crossing them. People take you away for just about anything. So my advice is this. Stay away from persons with questionable character. You stand a better chance of staying alive like Saturday Night Live. Point blank and period. So the next thing that is popping in the news is that we see that your Prime Minister Andrew Holness is getting into deeper and deeper-ish. And this is pertains to a, pertaining to a report that was done by the Integrity Commission in which they are saying there's a whole bunch of conflict of interest. There's a whole bunch of controversy in the way that the Prime Minister is running the country and all sorts of financial questionable things that is being shown based on his financial statement, based on 28 bank accounts in which all sorts of transactions amounting to in excess of about 400 and something million dollars were transferred from one bank account to the next. All of these bank accounts associated with Andrew Owens and his business partner. All sorts of conflict of interest with his business partners being persons that he has signed to the UDC Urban Development Corporation to the Land Authority, which you know that Prime Minister Andrew Holness and his wife are some sorts of developers, real estate mogul, them call it, in a couple of short years. So pretty much the latest thing they must say, 400 plus million dollar transferred, no sorts of question, no sorts of explanation. It gets even deeper because we see as soon as that report came out, there seems to be some sorts of deflection in which Andrew Holness or his wife called the Popo and said that they felt as if their life was in imminent danger, meaning somebody did some sorts of BOMB threat. There was some sorts of danger to their life. A lot of persons in real life on social media is saying that this is some sorts of deflection from the truth. Like I said, people, it got a little bit deeper because based on information that I am getting, it is said that Andrew Holness and one of his corporations, one of his companies, one of his bank account, took out some sorts of loan of $50 million from Barita, Barita Investments. Based on what Integrity Commission investigation has found, it is said that the way that he got this loan is kind of questionable because he got this loan based on some sorts of insurance policy, based on some sorts of investment 
pertaining also to SSL, which is also questionable. You know that Andrew Holness was also an investor in a SSL. He withdrew his money before it all came crashing down, meaning the Ponzi scheme that is SSL. Based on what the reports are saying, there is no sort of documentation that would say the insurance policy that he put up as some sort of bond could cover that $50 million loan. There is no sort of paperwork. When Barita Investment was contacted, they say because of the fact that Andrew Holness and the companies are high-level clients. The requirements are less stringent because the likely possibility of them defaulting on these loans was very low. So therefore, them get it from some sorts of face card. Meaning that one hand wash the other rich people-ish that poor people might not understand. However, at the end of the day, like I said, questionable, questionable, questionable. That loan was paid off in a few short years. And what is controversial and mind-blowing is that Andrew Holness at the time was making an income of 9 million Jamaican dollars. That was increased to 28 million Jamaican dollars in excess of 300% pay raise. How is it that somebody that is making $9 million can pay off $50 million in a few short years? People, we do not have to be the sharpest tool that is shed any sorts of genius to know that this is wool being drawn over our eyes. Something is not right. Something is not adding up. This is not admat. This is madmat. This is F-U-C-K-R-Y. And what makes it even worse, after the report came out and after the people from the PNP are saying, Andrew Holness needs to retire. Andrew Holness is the biggest chopper in a Jamaica. So Andrew Holness responds to all of this instead of answering the questions, instead of not being in such deep denial, is to threaten some sorts of lawsuit because he claimed that they are, or there is defamation of character. As a matter of fact, he even said that the Integrity Commission needs to be reviewed because of the fact that... They are just putting out reports that are not correct. Now, people, if you know anything about the politics in Jamaica, it was the JLP that pretty much hired the people of the Integrity Commission. So, therefore, they were hired on his watch for being credible people. So, now that they are doing their job and putting out correct report with documentation, with report of about 170 plus pages, he is now claiming that their report is incorrect. It is unjust. So people, don't you see these people want people to do their job for them? Whenever it is convenient, these people are good. Whenever it is inconvenient, whenever they are being exposed, these people are bad. Talk about controversy. Talk about conflict of interest. This is exactly what it is. Your prime minister is being exposed and he has zero defense. Point blank and period. So anyways, people, thanks once again for checking out my video. If you appreciate videos like these, please show your appreciation by liking, commenting, sharing and subscribing to my channel. That is how YouTube promotes videos like these to like-minded, sensible persons like yourself. And last but not least, please subscribe to my next channel. It is called Jamaica Dancehall Source. I'll be pinning the link to that channel in the description of this video. Bless up.